to East Columbus United Methodist Church. We have some things going on this week and here is the list. You, you will see them in your bulletin. Please register your attendance in the red attendance books. Tonight, Grace's Table, free meal, we serve tacos at 5 p.m. in the Youth Center. Anybody wanting to help or be included, please come join us. Weekly prayer hour is Tuesday from 10 to 11 in the sanctuary. Our next event coming up is Trunk or Treat on Halloween, October 31st from five to seven. Come and decorate the trunk of your car and pass out candy to the visiting children from the neighborhood. If you can't participate, participate but would like to donate bags of candy, please put them in the box under the coat rack. And if you plan to come and park your car, um, Please give me an idea if that is something that you'd like to be included in. I'd like to keep a rough list to be sure we have enough people. Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes and labels are available in the information area for anyone that would like to participate. The boxes are due on Sunday, November 17th. Please join me in the call to worship. Please rise. Welcome to worship today. Bring your joys and sorrows to the Lord. We come from busy lives, filled with a host of pains and blessings. 
Give your fears to the Lord, for God will heal your souls. Praise to God who listens to our cries and heals us. Open your ears and your hearts to the Lord. We open our lives to God's will. Amen.
please come forward. Well, I want to read to you Matthew 7, 12. See if I can find it here. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For, for this sums up the law and the prophets. Now this isn't the scripture that they're going to have in big people's sermon. They're going to talk about when the first shall be last and the last shall be first and being servants. But I thought it tied in really well because... If you don't do and help others the way that you'd like for them to help you, you're not much of a servant, are you? Right, yeah. So what we need to do, especially, you know, us guys that are close to the ground, anybody out there at all, you'll like this. If we see something that's dropped on the floor, we're closer to it, we can pick it up. Because we need to do the things to be a true servant, we need to do the things that are maybe not so glamorous. You know, we, we see the piece of paper on the floor and we pick it up, or we, we see that the trash is overflowing and we take it out, or we see that the kitty cat needs to be fed and, and you do it without mom asking. Doing things for others is what God wants us to do. He wants us to do not just the fun stuff, the stuff that's going to get you all kinds of praise and, and um, trophies and stuff here on earth. But do the stuff that nobody sees. Be that kind of a servant wherever you go. And you might not know, no one here on earth might not even know that you did it. But somebody does. Do you know who knows? God knows. That's right. And when you get to heaven, he will know all of those things that you did in secret. All of those things to help other people. And he will praise you for it. You think you can do that? It's not hard, is it? All right, let's pray. Lord, help us to be a servant. Help us to do all the things that need to be done, but have no glory in it. If we see that the toilet needs to be scrubbed or the trash needs to be taken out or there's things that need to be picked up off of the floor, let us do those things, whether we're in church or whether we're in our own homes or wherever we may be. Help us to be your servant. Help us to show others through our acts of kindness your love. We thank you for, for leading us and guiding us every single day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's take a moment to pray about what we have heard and also our personal prayers. Let's pray together. Precious Lord, you have called us here this day for healing, hope, and transformation. As we listen to the scripture, pray our prayers, sing our hymns, 
and hear the word of wisdom. Open our hearts to hear your claim on our lives, that we may fully and joyfully serve you. Merciful Lord, we confess that we have not always followed your ways and have fallen short of your glory. Please forgive us, cleanse us, and renew our spirit. Help us to turn away from sin and draw closer to you each day. Thank you for your mercy and grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, we lift up to you all those who are struggling today. Please grant your healing to those who are sick. Give peace to those who have broken hearts. Help us to love you and love our neighbor. Here is the word of assurance. Jesus understands our cries and our weaknesses. He forgives and heals our souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are healed and transformed. Amen. And now we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It's time to respond to God's grace in our lives and support the ministry of this church with our gift. Be assured, please come forward for the key of faith. And while we're doing that, we're going to sing I Was Served In. It'll be on the screen. Please stand if you're able. <laughs> others and to further your kingdom. May our offerings bring hope, love, and peace to those in need. We give with a joyful heart, trusting in your provision and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 9 verses 30 through 37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples and saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask. 
Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What are, were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down and called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We children are dismissed for children's church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's greet each other with this word. May peace be with you. May peace be with you. May peace be with you. What is the true greatness for a follower of Jesus? There is a big difference between what the world considers great and what God considers great. Today's passage, Mark 9, asks important questions to us. Why do people seek to elevate themselves? And what is the attitude of service that Jesus teaches us? And lastly, who are we called to serve? So let's uh, think about this question today and examine our hearts as explore what it means to be truly great in the kingdom of God. So let's read aloud the first scripture, Mark 9, verse 33 and 34. Let's read. Then they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another, he was the greatest. Amen. Our passage opens with Jesus and his disciples arriving in the town of Capernaum. As they settle into a house, Jesus turns to the disciples and ask them a simple question. What were you arguing about on the rock? But they kept quiet, because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest among them. This scene reveals a common trait of human nature. We often desire to be greater than others, and to be recognized as superior. Even the disciples who had witnessed countless miracles and teaching from Jesus were concerned about which of them was the greatest. I'm the greatest. They want to hear. I'm the greatest. The desire to elevate oneself stems from the fallen nature of humanity, which began with this obedience of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The serpent's temptation that they would be like God, it can become like God, appeal to their pride and ever since Mankind has struggled with the temptation to seek power, recognition, and status. We want to be acknowledged and esteemed. This desire is natural, but it often leads us away from the humility that God calls to us to do. This word tells us that success is found in rising to the top. The more wealth, power, and status we attain, the more successful we are deemed to be. But Jesus introduces a radically different principle. He teaches that our purpose in this world 
is not to seek our own glory, but to glorify God through our service to Him and to others. Now it's the time of Jesus' teaching. So let's read aloud the next verse, Mark 9, 35. Let's read together. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. After their argument, Jesus sat down, a posture of authority in Jewish teaching. So Jesus sat down and called twelve, uh, 12 to himself. Then Jesus gives them a teaching that completely turns their idea of greatness upside down. He says to them, anyone who wants to be first must be very lost, and the servant of all. Can you imagine the disciples' reaction? This was not what they expected. In their culture, Greatness was associated with power and authority. And to be first meant to be in charge, the first seat, to have influence, to command respect. But here Jesus introduced a new concept, the way to greatness is not through elevating oneself, but by lowering oneself. Jesus is not rebuking the desire for greatness itself. He doesn't tell the disciples to stop wanting to be great. Instead, he refined, redefined what greatness is in the kingdom of God. In his kingdom, God's kingdom, greatness is measured not by how high you can climb, but by how low you are willing Go to serve others, serving others, serve God. So what does it mean that we have this hurt, we have the heart of a servant? The heart of a servant is about giving everything, giving ourselves, our time, our resources, our energy for the benefit of others. Jesus gave all to us. It means putting others ahead of ourselves, not for the sake of recognition, but out of love. Because of love, give everything. Give myself. Servant who requires humility, it requires a willingness to take the lowest position, to care. For those who can offer nothing in return. And to seek the good of others of all our own. So Jesus said this is a true path to greatness. And Jesus gave us a good example. Jesus himself. Ultimate example. In Philippians uh, chapter 2 says the apostles Apostle Paul tells us that even though Jesus was in very nature God, he didn't use that status for his own advantage. Instead, he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. My beloved friends, Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus is God, but He didn't come to be served, but to serve. He washed the feet of His disciples. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. And ultimately, He gave His life on the cross for us. He gave all. He gave himself to us. His entire mission on earth was one of humble, sacrificial service. This is the greatness 
to which he calls us. This greatness that comes not from self-promotion, but from self-sacrifice. Sacrifice for others, those who are in need. So today I pray that we can follow that path of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now let's read aloud the last verse, 37. Let's read together. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The definition of greatness that Jesus taught is the heart of a servant who serves others. So now, let's think about who we are called to serve. Jesus gives a very specific and practical answer to this question. He teaches that welcoming a little child is the same as welcoming him. This means in Jesus' time, children held the lowest position in society. They had no status, no power, no voice. They were entirely dependent on others for protection and care. Through such a trial, Jesus teaches his disciples that true service is about serving those who cannot repay, those who are ignored or marginalized by this world. I want to share one story. Pastor David Kate and Tommy Tenney wrote a book titled God's Secret to Greatness, The Power of the Top. And there is one story in this book. Uh, this pastor, Dave Kate, was leading a church in Johannesburg, South Africa. At the time, the Lord gave him the one word, servant. In the process of understanding the meaning and purpose of the single word of servant, God spoke to Pastor David, saying, Step down from pastoring and go out into the street to wash people's feet. For 14 months, David and his family repeatedly confirmed this strange, surprising After discerning that this was indeed the Lord's calling, Pastor Dave embarked on this journey with his family. He stepped down from his position as a local church pastor and began traveling across the country. His wife and his children traveled in a trailer while he carried more than 20 kilograms of supplies, including a wooden cross with a basin attached, a bucket of water, towers, and chair. He went wherever the Lord commanded, delivering the message and washing people's feet. This journey started near Soweto in the northern eastern part of South Africa and extended all the way to Cape Town. Along the way, many miracles occurred. His journey was also replicated in the United States from New York to Los Angeles. Approaching strangers with the offer to wash their feet was unfamiliar and uncomfortable for most people. But Pastor Dave had a way of disarming people's heart, persuading prostitutes, presidents, and the poor to dip their feet into his wooden basin. Through Pastor David and his wife's obedience 
to this strange calling. They engage in a supernatural ministry of service. And God's mercy touched entire cities through them, through their power of Holy Spirit. They use their power. <coughs> the miracles began as Pastor David knelt on the dirt, dirty roadside on the hot day, washing the feet of strangers. And one day, as he entered a crowded beach re res resort at Raguana Beach in Orange County, California, it was packed with people enjoying sun or oiling their bodies and tanning. Pastor David was the only person in crowded dressed like an explorer from the jungle, carrying his robe with a cross and a bassoon. He quietly prayed, God, is this the place where you will do your work? At the moment, he saw a young man who had just finished surfing coming out of the water. The young man had long hair, an earring, and tattoos all over his body. As soon as he saw Pastor David, he gave him a thumbs up because he has a weird some outfit. And Pastor David approached him and explained his mission. The young man responded, Oh, this Jesus stuff doesn't work on me. When asked, when asked why, the young man showed him his arms, covered in blue and black bruise from countless drug injections. He admitted he was hopeless drug addict. But Pastor David, then said, but Jesus can set you free right now. And she shared the, he shared the gospel, telling the young man that Jesus came to set him free. And David knelt on the hot sands of Laguna Beach, which in front of this drug addicted young man, and began washing his feet. As the young man placed his feet into the basin attached to the cross, Pastor David prayed in the name of Jesus to break the chain of drug addiction. Soon others who witnessed the scene gathered around, asking to have their feet washed as well. Young men began opening their heart and accepting Jesus. Amen? Amen. So like this, whenever Pastor David went, he knelt with a tower and washed many people's feet. And God was always there with him. This is power of tower. The tower of Holy Spirit. The tower of serving. The tower of a servant. My beloved brothers and sisters, are we holding the power of service? When we lower ourselves into a place of service, rather than seeking to elevate ourselves, the glory of God will be rebuilt in there. Every time we serve those who are ignored or marginalized or, hung or hungry by this word, it is as if we are receiving Jesus himself. So Jesus will be so pleased and let's give glory to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have mercy on us. Amen. <coughs> now let's take a moment to pray and meditate on God's voice. Let's pray together.
Now we're going to sing the closing hymn. So please rise and praise our Lord again. <laughs> Come and pray, sisters, sing out my song. 